Hello and welcome to the Unseen Question. Prayer has been credited with everything from finding lost keys to curing terminal illness, but there's one striking absence that cuts through all the noise. Prayer has never once been able to regrow a missing limb. No arms, no legs, no fingers or toes. People have been praying for thousands of years, across every culture, language, and denomination, yet the results are always the same. Someone might claim their headache went away, someone else might insist their cancer was healed, but never once in human history has prayer caused a severed limb to grow back. That silence speaks louder than all the miracle stories combined. If prayer were genuinely powerful, if it really had the ability to reshape the body, then regrowing a limb should be the clearest possible demonstration. It would be undeniable, indisputable, a miracle that couldn't be explained away. Instead, what we see is nothing, no hands restored, no legs reformed. Some people try to soften this by saying, well, God works in mysterious ways, but that answer raises more questions than it settles. If God is all-powerful and compassionate, why would he heal a sore throat, but not a child who lost both arms in an accident? Why would he supposedly cure someone's lower back pain, but never a soldier's missing leg? The pattern suggests not divine mystery, but human imagination filling in the gaps. It's worth looking at how human biology actually works. Limbs don't grow back because our bodies lack the regenerative capacity. Certain creatures like salamanders can regrow tails or legs. Humans can't. The body responds to amputation with scar tissue, not regeneration. That's a basic fact of our biology. So if prayer were going to do something beyond nature, this is where it would stand out. And yet, it doesn't. People who lose limbs often turn to prayer because of the pain and desperation. They want hope, and hope is powerful, but it's not the same as results. We have countless documented cases of amputees from wars, accidents, illnesses, and not one single medically verified instance of a limb being restored through prayer. That absence is not random. It reveals the limits of belief when it collides with reality. Supporters of prayer sometimes shift the goalposts. They'll say that prayer is about comfort, not physical outcomes, or that God answers prayers in spiritual ways instead of material ones. But that avoids the obvious problem. For centuries, preachers and believers have claimed prayer heals the sick and performs miracles, not just that it provides emotional support. The moment the failure becomes too glaring, the definition quietly changes. The striking thing is how selective these so-called miracles are. A tumor shrinking can be explained by medical treatment, spontaneous remission, or misdiagnosis, but it gets claimed as divine. Intervention. A lost object being found is labeled an answered prayer, but a missing arm. No one has ever prayed and woken up with fingers fully restored, veins and muscles woven back together. If prayer really had supernatural power, that's exactly the sort of thing we should see. Yet we don't. And this isn't just about the biology. It's about the psychology. Humans are experts at seeing patterns, even when none exist. A headache goes away after a prayer, and it feels like the two are connected. That's the power of coincidence combined with confirmation bias. But a missing limb doesn't leave room for that kind of self-deception. There's no, maybe it improved a little when an arm is gone. It either grows back, or it doesn't, and it doesn't. When this point is raised, believers often respond defensively. Some will say, you're testing God. Others will insist that God gives strength to endure suffering instead of removing it. But that argument reduces prayer to something indistinguishable from psychology. If all prayer does is provide comfort, then it's not about divine intervention at all. It's about the human brain's ability to cope. The history of prayer and healing makes this even clearer. In earlier centuries, diseases like smallpox or plague were prayed over endlessly. And yet those prayers did nothing until science discovered vaccines. The prayers stayed the same, but the outcomes changed only when human knowledge advanced. If prayer had real healing power, epidemics wouldn't have ravaged entire continents. Limbs lost in accidents wouldn't remain lost. But that's not what happened. Some people claim that the reason limbs don't regrow is because that would be too obvious. They say God doesn't want to give proof so strong that it removes the need for faith. But think about what that implies. It means God deliberately avoids helping people in the clearest, most compassionate way possible, just to preserve belief. It paints a picture not of love, but of manipulation. If a child loses both legs in a car accident, are we really supposed to believe that the reason prayer won't work is because God doesn't want to reveal himself too directly? That explanation doesn't sound noble. It sounds cruel. It suggests that protecting a system of belief is more important than protecting a child's body. And if that's true, then prayer is not about compassion or healing at all. It's about maintaining control. When you look at it through this lens, the silence of prayer becomes understandable. It's not that there's some cosmic strategy at work. 
It's that prayer is a human activity, not a divine one. The results match what we'd expect if people were simply talking to themselves, seeking comfort in ritual and finding meaning in coincidence. Medical science exposes this contrast even more sharply. Take prosthetics, for example. Over the last hundred years, we've developed artificial limbs that allow people to walk, run, and even control robotic arms with their thoughts. That progress came from research, engineering, trial and error, not prayer. The closest thing we've ever seen to regrowing a limb is through scientific innovation, not divine intervention. Stem cell research and regenerative medicine are also exploring possibilities that prayer has never delivered. Scientists are experimenting with ways to regrow tissue, nerves, and even parts of organs. Early progress has been slow but real. And this shows something important. If prayer had any measurable effect, researchers would see it. Hospitals would have cases of unexplained regeneration. Doctors would publish studies. But there's nothing. The silence isn't because prayer works mysteriously. It's because prayer doesn't work at all in that way. Believers sometimes push back with personal stories. They'll insist they've seen prayer work. Maybe they prayed and their pain went away or a scan showed their illness had improved. But again, these stories always involve conditions with a natural range of outcomes. Pain comes and goes. Illnesses sometimes improve on their own. Bodies heal scratches and bruises. That creates space for people to believe prayer played a role. But amputated limbs don't heal that way, which makes them the perfect test case, and the results speak for themselves. The psychological pull of prayer also can't be underestimated. People are taught from childhood that prayer is powerful. They're told stories of miraculous healings, divine protection, and answered requests. That conditioning creates an expectation. And when you deeply expect something, your brain searches for confirmation. If a small thing lines up with what you prayed for, it feels huge. It feels like evidence. But if a prayer goes unanswered, the failure gets explained away, either by blaming ourselves for not having enough faith, or by claiming the answer was no. This system is self-protecting. Every success is counted as proof. Every failure is reframed so it doesn't count against belief. That's why the missing limb problem is so important. It's the one place where this mental trick doesn't work. You can't explain away the absence of a hand. You can't reinterpret a missing foot as a different kind of blessing. The body is either restored or it isn't. And since it never is, the truth becomes unavoidable. It's also revealing to notice how religions respond when pressed on this point. They rarely try to argue that prayer can regrow limbs. Instead, they dodge, shifting the conversation towards spiritual healing or emotional strength. It's a quiet concession that the claim doesn't hold up. Because if prayer were real in the way it's often advertised, it would work where it matters most. And here's the deeper issue. If prayer fails at the clearest, most measurable request, why should we believe it works at all? Why accept that it heals cancer, but not a severed arm? Why think it protects someone from a car crash, but not from paralysis? The selective successes look suspiciously like random chance combined with human interpretation. This isn't about being harsh toward people who pray. For many, prayer is a source of comfort during suffering. It provides a ritual to hold on to when everything feels out of control. That's understandable, but comfort doesn't prove effectiveness. And the inability of prayer to achieve something as straightforward as limb regeneration reveals its limits in a way nothing else does. When people defend prayer, one of the most common arguments is that God answers prayers in ways we can't understand. But that turns prayer into a kind of blank check. Whatever happens, no matter how contradictory, gets labeled as God's will. If a disease improves, that's an answered prayer. If it gets worse, that's God saying no. If nothing changes at all, then it's a test of faith. The framework is designed so prayer can never be wrong. And that's exactly why it's unfalsifiable. But unfalsifiable beliefs are dangerous. They can't be tested, they can't be challenged, and they can't be proven. That's why the limb regrowth question is such an important counterexample. It's the one test where excuses don't work. Because no matter how much you redefine the rules, an amputated arm not growing back is still an amputated arm not growing back. There's also a moral problem hidden in all of this. If prayer were truly effective, then every unhealed amputee is proof of divine neglect. If God can heal, but chooses not to, then every missing leg is a silent testimony of cruelty. And if he can't heal, then prayer is nothing more than wishful thinking. Either way, the result is the same. The limb remains gone. Consider how selective the claims of prayer are compared to the needs of real people. We hear endless stories about someone praying for a job and then getting hired, or praying for their lost dog and then finding it again. 
But what about the countless children living their whole lives without arms or legs? What about the thousands of soldiers who came home from war missing limbs? If prayer truly had power, these would be the most obvious demonstrations. Yet there is only silence. What we do see is progress in science, not prayer. Prosthetic limbs that can be controlled by the brain. Neural implants that allow people to move robotic arms with thought. Bionic legs that restore mobility. These are achievements we can measure, repeat, improve. They don't rely on faith. They rely on evidence, and they've actually changed lives in ways prayer never has. Think about how powerful it would be if prayer really could do what believers claim. If a child who lost her hand in an accident could go home, pray with her family, and wake up the next day with her fingers perfectly restored, that would transform the world. There would be no debate, no skepticism. Faith would be undeniable, but it never happens. Not once. And the silence is telling. Some believers respond with the idea that God doesn't give spectacular miracles anymore, that such things only happened in the distant past. But even then, the stories don't hold up. The Bible and other religious texts speak of healings, but not of amputated limbs restored. The most dramatic claims are still vague, unverifiable, or conveniently impossible to test. The same pattern repeats across history. Bold claims, weak evidence, are never the kind of miracle that would settle the question once and for all. This highlights something we don't often acknowledge. Prayer survives because it thrives on ambiguity. If the effects are always vague, then people can keep believing. But when the test is clear and concrete, like regrowing a limb, the illusion shatters. That's why this problem is so important. It's not just a biological limit. It's a boundary that exposes the difference between belief and reality. And yet people continue to pray, not because it works in the way they claim, but because it fills a need. Prayer gives people a sense of control in situations where they're powerless. It allows them to feel like they're doing something. It creates community and ritual. In that sense, prayer has value but not the value believers claim. It doesn't regrow limbs, it doesn't override biology, it doesn't change the laws of nature. There's another layer to this conversation that often gets overlooked, and that's the question of fairness. If prayer really were effective, why would its results be so inconsistent? Why would one person claim healing while another is left to suffer? If both prayed with equal sincerity, what explains the difference? Believers often say it's about the mystery of God's will, but if we're being honest, that sounds more like an excuse than an answer. Look closely at the way prayer miracles are distributed. They almost always fall into areas where natural recovery is already possible. Headaches, fevers, chronic pain that fluctuates. In other words, conditions that might get better on their own. When it comes to injuries that the body cannot naturally repair, like severed spinal cords or amputated limbs, the miracles vanish. The correlation is too strong to ignore. The psychological explanation is much more consistent. People remember the hits, and forget the misses. If you pray a hundred times and feel something improved once, that becomes the story you tell. The other 99 failures quietly fade into the background. That's how human memory works. It filters reality in a way that reinforces belief, and it's one reason prayer continues to feel powerful even when the evidence shows otherwise. This isn't just about individuals either. Whole communities reinforce the narrative. In churches, testimonies of answered prayer are celebrated. People stand up and share their stories of healing or provision. But you almost never hear someone stand up to say, I prayed and nothing happened. Failures are silently swept aside, while successes, even questionable ones, are amplified. Over time, this creates a distorted picture. It makes it seem like prayer works more often than it really does. And yet, the limb problem refuses to disappear. It's the one question that cuts through all the noise, because there is no way to reinterpret an absent limb. You can't reframe an empty sleeve. You can't convince yourself that a missing foot somehow returned when it hasn't. And that's why, despite all the stories and testimonies, not a single medically documented case exists of a limb being restored through prayer. The history of medicine underscores this point. For thousands of years, amputations were a death sentence, not because of the missing limb itself, but because of infection. Surgeons prayed, families prayed, communities prayed, but nothing stopped the loss. It was only when antiseptics, anesthesia, and antibiotics were discovered that survival rates improved. And today, advanced prosthetics give people a chance at independence. None of that progress came from prayer. It came from human effort, science, and persistence. There's also a sociological dimension worth noting. In societies where prayer is emphasized as the primary solution, people often delay or avoid medical treatment. Believing that God will provide, they may wait until conditions worsen. 
In some tragic cases, children have died from treatable illnesses because parents chose prayer over medicine. These stories don't make headlines as miracles. They make headlines as preventable tragedies. And again, not one of these cases ever involved a limb growing back. Now, let's step back and think about what all of this means. The absence of limb regeneration through prayer is not a small detail. It's a devastating blow to the idea that prayer has supernatural power. Because if prayer really connected us to an all-powerful, compassionate being, this is where the proof would be undeniable. No one could argue against a child regrowing an arm after prayer. No skeptic could dismiss it. It would end debate immediately. But it doesn't happen. And that silence says everything. Sometimes defenders of prayer argue that miracles have to be rare, otherwise they wouldn't be special. But that excuse doesn't hold. Up. If a miracle is supposed to reveal divine compassion, then withholding it from those who need it most defeats the point. What could be more compassionate than restoring a child's missing hand? What could be a stronger demonstration of divine care than giving a soldier back his legs? Instead, the supposed miracles we hear about tend to be small, ambiguous, or unverifiable. Things like, I felt peace, or, the doctor said my tumor shrank, never the clear, undeniable transformation of a body made whole again. And this raises a troubling thought. If prayer is said to work, but it never delivers the most obvious and compassionate outcomes, then what does that say about the system of belief behind it? Does it reveal divine love or human wishful thinking? When the pattern is this consistent, the answer becomes hard to ignore. Let's also consider the role of expectation. People who pray are usually taught what kinds of outcomes to expect. They're primed to see improvement in areas that are already prone to fluctuation. They're primed to interpret coincidence as intervention, but they're not primed to expect new legs to appear overnight. Why not? Because deep down, even the most devout believer knows it won't happen. That quiet, unspoken knowledge says more than any sermon. It's the subconscious admission that prayer doesn't work in the way it's advertised. The contrast with technology is striking. In the past, losing a limb meant permanent disability. Today, prosthetics can give people the ability to run marathons. Some can climb mountains, others can control robotic arms with their thoughts. These are genuine, verifiable, and repeatable breakthroughs. No one credits them to divine intervention. We recognize them as the product of research, design, and human ingenuity. And unlike prayer, they work consistently. If we follow this pattern, the future may hold even more. Advances in regenerative medicine are slowly uncovering ways to regrow tissue, repair nerves, and maybe one day even restore partial limb function. It's still far from complete limb regeneration, but the progress is real. And it underscores a crucial point. The only path toward restoring lost limbs is through science, not prayer. The evidence is on the lab bench not in the pews. It's also worth noticing how believers respond when science makes progress. They often retroactively claim that new discoveries are part of God's plan, that science works only because God allows it. But if that's true, then why does prayer always wait for science to catch up? Why didn't prayer cure infections before antibiotics? Why didn't prayer restore movement to paralyzed people before stem cell research? The timeline shows a clear pattern. Progress comes when humans take responsibility, not when they wait on divine intervention. This leads to another question. If prayer can't regrow limbs, then why do people continue to insist it works? The answer lies in human psychology. We are meaning-making creatures. We want to believe our words and rituals matter. We want to believe we have a line to something greater than ourselves. And in moments of desperation, that belief can feel like a lifeline. But the emotional comfort of belief doesn't translate into physical reality. The limb remains missing no matter how many prayers are whispered. And this is where the difference between emotional truth and objective truth becomes clear. Emotionally, prayer may feel real, it may feel powerful, but objectively, it produces no measurable results beyond what chance and nature already provide. And nothing exposes that gap more starkly than the failure to restore a severed arm or leg. 